Well, perhaps uh, this is a good time to leave the artificial intelligentsia and get to the members of our audience uh, and ask them whether they'd like to make any points to Sir James or to the other principal speakers. There's a question here. My name is Dr. Larkin. I work at the uh, Department of Computer Science at the University of Warwick. I make robots. In particular, I make a robot called Arthur, <laughs> who's mobile and blind, unlike Professor Mickey's, which is a hand-eye robot, uh, although I must admit that Professor Mickey moves the world rather than moving his robot in the world. Now, I call what I do with this robot psychomechanics. I prefer it. It's one word rather than two, artificial intelligence, and probably describes more accurately what I'm trying to do. But this is a subject, as far as I'm concerned, which is firmly embedded in computer science. I'm in a computer science department. And it involves, the work I'm doing involves uh, the kind of advanced programming that we've uh, heard about. But the work I'm doing also affects our concepts of what a computer is, or rather, what a psychomechanism is. Because a computer is not the, the beast for doing the job we're talking about. A computer is designed to do sums. And uh, we, we have to look into the design of the machine we're using to do the actual uh, thinking part of, of the task and see whether we can't redesign that as well. And this is the area I'm at present uh, very much concerned in. Now, when we get into the area of psychomechanisms, and that's a psychomechanism, uh, it's uh, fairly small. But if I use that as a computer, which I could do, it's more powerful than the first computer I first worked on, a juice computer. And that used to fill a room. Now, psychomechanisms have some form of intelligence. I don't think there's any uh, dispute about that. But there's no spectrum of intelligence for robots uh, the way there is a spectrum of intelligence for animals. For instance, my robot, Arthur, could be described as a literate dog. Now, just how general purpose is a literate dog? <laughs> well, how does Arthur rate? <laughs> Uh, well, I think if you really uh, investigate the full range of psychological uh, functions and capabilities of a dog, you'll find that it's well ahead of all these robots. <laughs> yes. Uh, Roger Needham, Cambridge University. I think one root of the disagreement between Professor McCarthy and Professor Lighthill is that the one believes and the other doesn't that there is a subject to study of problem-solving and goal-seeking, which is quite independent of any particular sort of problem or any particular sort of goal. Now, it seems to me that it would be a good thing to help resolve this, this being an issue on which I myself in some intellectual doubt, as to if we could have a list of the achievements in problem-solving and goal-seeking without any reference at all to what kind of problem or goal it is. Uh, one achievement has been what I call the separation of heuristics from epistemology as a, uh, a subject. Namely, uh, the, um, the, the search processes are the heuristic, is the domain of heuristics, and the epistemology is the formalism that you use to represent information and uh, describe the world. Um, another achievement is the Winograd achievement of showing that keep carrying semantic information as you go along uh, is the key thing even in parsing a sentence. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, this work uh, basically refutes the uh, Chomsky school mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, of uh, grammar. Uh, because it's not merely general semantic information about the meanings of words which is being carried along, but which is being used, but information about the particular situation in which the sentence is uttered. I don't think it's necessary to go through the large list. Uh, indeed, of course, I don't deny the accuracy of what's been said, and things like the involvement of semantics, I'm very glad that people who wish to make robots do things have learnt about that, because it's been known for a very long time. All I would like to point out is that these are somewhat in the area of anecdotes, the swallows that might begin to make the summer, rather than beginning to look like 
the coherent structure of a coherent scientific discipline, which I gather Professor McCarthy claimed that this, that this all was. Okay, as to its coherence, well, it's a bit weak now uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is one might call the look ma no hand school of programming, which says <laughs> that you take something that no one has ever done before and you write a program to do it and you call your friends and you write a paper and they admire the fact that it did it uh, with uh, no effort to connect this into any, um, in, in any coherent theory. The other thing which inhibits theory in, in artificial intelligence um, is that the, it can be immediately checked out by whether it really does provide the behavior uh, that it is supposed to. So uh, the apparent existence of theories in fields like uh, psychology um, is very often a mirage. Uh, <laughs> and I would say that the, th that the theoretical situation in AI is very tough. And uh, now, uh, I've been in this field, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years, and I'm not discouraged yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't identify uh, the rise of the science and its reaching its peaks uh, with, that, with my own career. I imagine that uh, the science will continue to grow uh, even after I am not actively making contributions to it. Yes. Did you want to add anything no. else? Uh, right. Christopher Stritch here from Oxford University. Uh, like Professor McCarthy, I've also been in the game about 20 years, nor am I discouraged. But I do not choose to work in the field of artificial intelligence because I think it is too difficult. Uh, I would like to uh, make a comment about Professor Bickey's anecdotal method of supporting uh, uh, work in a, in a very difficult field by quoting a totally irrelevant, incorrect pro prophecy about Bell, Bell's telephone a uh, hundred years ago. Uh, a more recent incorrect prophecy uh, was made about the ability to translate uh, human languages by machines, uh, and that turned out exactly the opposite way. The general, the general view, opinion was that it would be possible to translate uh, uh, or do have machine translation of human languages e efficiently and economically. It turned out, in fact, of course, that it was rather cheaper to use a human being than to use any, any uh, translation mechanism. I think it's a mistake to confuse the uh, intellectual difficulties uh, with, um, with these fields. I think it's to, to underestimate them. I'm, always, I'm a bit surprised by the way in which the people who seem to work on artificial intelligence come along and say, oh, well, we started off like this, and after quite a short time, we were horrified to find it was all rather difficult. Now, it seemed to me that if you looked at the field uh, with a dispassionate view 20 years ago, you would very soon find that it was extremely hard. I wrote a program to play checkers or drafts about 20 years ago, and uh, ran, ran immediately into the combinatorial explosion, had a look at it, and came to the conclusion that that was not for me. Um, uh, and Samuel's program? Sorry? And Samuel's program for the same game? Samuel's program for the same game is an example of advanced automation. Let's just let Professor Stroger finish. Uh, I think Samuel's program, and so I think would you, is, is an example of advanced automation where he's built into the program the properties of the game. Right, Donald Mickey. I was just going to say that I think Professor Strachey is a little too modest in that he was, his own work on checkers in the 1950s was in fact the launching pad from which Samuel subsequently developed his uh, checkers learning program. Furthermore, uh, Samuel's program uh, has played a worthy and useful role and many people have learned many things from it. <laughs> well, if I may just uh, conclude, uh, one of the most valuable uh, roles it's played in the general rather than the technical area is discrediting the cruder versions of the doctrine that you only get out what you put in because eventually Samuel's program learned to be a better checkers player than Samuel himself. But not, if I may come back on that, a better player than the people whose games he played into it. Now, 
Um, I object very uh, strongly uh, to the. I object. Yes, sir. I object very strongly to the uh, 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 miscellaneous and irresponsible use of words like learning, which have no very clear meaning. They are emotive terms. I do not believe that, checkers is, that Samuel's Checkers Pair is, in any genuine sense, a learning program. It's an optimizing program. I do not call optimizing programs learning programs. Uh, I mean, it's not the point place to go into technical details. But there's a very great tendency, I find, with people working in the artificial intelligence field, to make really to, to, to spoil their case by using normal human terms, anthropomorphic terms, about very, very, very simplified objects, things like advice takers. The advice taker, the, the chess advice taker, is simply a programming system. It's, no, it's a more specialized advice taker than my ordinary programming language compiler and loader. That will take advice. Uh, it isn't an advice taker, it's, an it's a way of instructing the computer to do something. Now, I, I think to use the word advice taker when you mean a program is uh, misleading. Oh, yes. I'm Richard Parkins and I'm a computer scientist. And it seems to me that Professor Lighthill and the artificial intelligentsia are arguing not about things, but about the names of things. Because whenever the artificial intelligentsia have produced what they consider to be a good example of artificial intelligence, Professor Lighthill has turned around and said, yes, that's a marvellous piece of work, but it's some other field. Do you want to answer that at this well, point? Well, it's certainly true that I believe in having uh, the minimum amount of philosophical mystification in, in talking about science. I agree with Professor Strachey that when we're talking about programs, we should call them programs, and when we're talking about brains, we should call them brains. Um, You've been uh, silent for some time, Richard Gregor. Do you want to say something? Yeah. I'm a bit worried, so to speak, about the philosophical position here. When you say <coughs> you can recognize that a problem is beyond science, I think you're really saying it's beyond any future science. This is, a bit, I think, a bold claim. For example, alchemy, uh, the transmutation of gold. Our chairman can check on my facts here. Mm -hmm. I understand it was accepted as possible right through the Middle Ages, then it was damned by science, and then it was done with atomic piles. I think I'm correct. Uh, there are many examples all through science. The, the need for a vital yes, force, so mm. for example, in, in organic chemistry is one of, yes. the, one of the best. And uh, inevitably, almost, they have, been, uh, they have been shown to be wrong, these restrictions. But I think... Uh, there are limits I think, to uh, how far forward in the centuries exactly. we, we can even uh, I think contemplate. The, you did, in fact, mm. Sir James mm. might have did, did eventually say that it was, it was not impossible, but it was highly improbable this was the point wasn't it well, I, I think that in practical terms it's it, it, it's a mirage in the sense that if it's something that we think we can see in the horizon in the sense that uh, on our deathbeds it may be announced or uh, our children will see mm. it uh, yeah, that it's that it's really there on the horizon uh, then I, I disagree with such a view well we have uh, half a dozen people wanting to talk but I'm afraid time's running out and I must wind up the discussion stimulating as, as it's been. I'd like to thank all those who've taken part, and especially our principal speakers, Professor Mickey, Professor McCarthy, and Professor Gregory for coming along tonight.